Mauro Ronaldo comes out for the main event. A breath of fresh air, an actual pro wrestling announcer here on this pro wrestling I show. was so hoping that he was just going to replace Stryker. But instead, we end up with a three-man crew. Mm -hmm. So I have to listen to Matt Stryker as Mauro Ronaldo is trying to call a champion versus... Now, here's the thing with Stryker in this match. It just... Brother, listen. It's Kenny Omega versus Rich Swan. Okay, should we do a poll on the Twitch chat right here? How many of you thought that Rich Swan was going to win the match tonight and become the double champion? Can I see a, a, a show of hands? I was bet you get no, zero no, responses. No, 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 no. Okay, nobody, nobody thought sure. that Rich Swan was winning tonight, okay? So. There's a lot of no's. I'm watching them right now. No way <laughs> in hell, one guy says. No, okay. So. Of course not. <laughs> Why in the absolute fuck, if you are Matt Stryker, impact wrestling announcer, would you come out and say, you know what? Out of all the champions in professional wrestling, whether it's... <laughs> he actually said Bobby. He did. Not even Lashley. The Bobby. The Bobby. I, I missed that. He's rattling off all of these champions. Bobby, you say. Osprey. He lists off everybody. And then at the end he goes, even Bobby. <laughs> he goes, the man, the man to beat is Kenny Omega. Right. I'm like, brother, can you fucking just put over poor Rich Swan for like one breath? Like, why in the fuck would you tell me that as the impact announcer in a champion versus champion match? Why would you tell me that not your man, who, by the way, holds two titles. He's the impact and the TNA heavyweight champion. No, right. no, no. He's not the man to beat in wrestling. Kenny Omega. That's the guy to beat. I'm like, well, fuck. Should I just turn the goddamn show off now? I mean, and of course, Kenny Omega wins. I just... Why Why would you do that? Help me. Help me out and believe that maybe there's a chance, maybe, that Rich Swan could win. Nobody believed in Rich Swan, including the Impact announcer. That's a hell of a way to start your champion versus champion match. So it's Kenny Omega versus Rich Swan. I was dared online to sing the lyrics to Kenny Omega's song. I'm not going to do that because, frankly, I know you just mute me anyway. Thank you. But very early on in this match, they're brawling on the floor, and Swan charges, and Kenny goes to the spot where he backdrops Swan, and Swan does the, the handspring off the ropes, goes down with like a DDT. That's the idea, I think. But what actually yeah. happened was Swan gets backdropped up onto the apron. He does a handstand on the apron, but he's not strong enough to hold his handstand, and he drops himself on the apron head first, and he pile drives himself. Yeah. Somebody please tell me, is that what they were trying to do to make Rich Swan look like the biggest geek in the world? Tell me that's not the idea. That's well, I don't know, wrong. because he did the spot, and then Kenny Omega immediately went to work on his neck. He and did. they worked on his neck throughout the rest of the match. So, like, there's two options right here. One of them is it was a plan, or the other is it was a botch, and then Kenny Omega, because he's one of the greatest wrestlers of the last 10,000 years, did, in fact, build an entire match around his botch. That happened, yes. Yeah. Who was the, uh, the guy from New Japan that landed on his in the corner and then bounced on his head like that? It was... Um... You have to be more specific. <laughs> I was going to say, that happens in, I would say, 8 out of 10 Every matches. Every match, yes. <sighs> Yeah, I'm not gonna Takahashi? No, he's a masked wrestler. I don't wrestled know wrestled in ROH as well. Um, ah. Well, Somebody anyway. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I got to say this about this match, okay? I thought this was an excellent main event, okay? I thought this was an excellent main event. Dick. What? Nothing. What, what, what do you want me to do? I don't know who you're talking about. A masked guy who once worked Ring of Honor? Understood. You could just let it go, but no. Let's, let's I was go. moving on, and then you called me a dick. Yes, because you are. So do you want me to move on, or do you want me to harp no, on it? No, let's talk about you being a dick. Jesus. Let's do that. So listen, they have this match. It's a great match. You all right over there, Vinny? Am I wrong, <laughs> chat? Jesus, God almighty, I'm trying to... You know how many times I, I try to fucking move on and no one ever lets me? I have no idea. I am going to move on about. now. I don't know who this guy is. I am moving on. 
Good so idea. they have this match. Move okay? On. The match is going along great. <laughs> Working their asses off. Sure. Okay? Now, Still a dick. maybe he is just a great wrestler. You can say dick, but not fuck. What? Maybe he's just a great wrestler. But it appeared to me that Rich Swan, about 10 minutes before this match ended, hit the wall and got mm. absolutely, completely, totally blown up. Right. Gasping for air. That's what I got out of this. And somehow, because he is, in fact, maybe, he may be the greatest wrestler of the last 10,000 years. He yeah. took a guy that couldn't move, that was completely <laughs> blown up, yeah. gasping for air and half dead, and he just got the rest of the match out of him. He yes. was like, we will finish this match, Rich Swan. I will carry your carcass, if I must, to the end of this match right here. Like, if this match went 30 minutes, Rich Swan was awesome for 20 minutes, okay? The last 10 minutes, he just, like, he had nothing left. That's what I, I mean... Maybe he just worked me, but I'm pretty sure that he just had nothing left. And Kenny was great for the whole 30 minutes, and he got the last 10 minutes out of Rich Swan, even though Rich Swan was completely and totally exhausted. I don't even know how many people noticed. I noticed. But they, they for a match that was champion versus champion in an empty building with no fans, but somehow you could hear them, they're cheering. Yeah, I mean... A lot of Dude, this is as good a match as you're going to have in a champion versus champion match in this environment. I thought they did a hell of a job. The only two things that were blown, they did. They tried to do something off the top rope on two separate occasions, and I don't know what happened. I don't know if somebody slipped. I don't know if there's a miscommunication, but both times when they tried something off the top rope, it failed miserably. So, yes, uh, uh, we had... A lot of back and forth. It was next to the match. I actually the, for, get that out of the way. It's a very, yes. very, very good pay per view made of it. So they did a ref bump where Swan goes for the springboard cutter, the same move that Jay Lethal calls the lethal injection. You do a handspring off the ropes, come back into a cutter. But Omega pulls the impact wrestling referee into the way. And this drops the ref. The ref gets bumped. He takes the cutter on accident. And so Aubrey Edwards is the ring. She's there to be the all-elite wrestling referee. So Kenny thinks now he has an out. Or he thinks he has a, 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 someone watching his back. So he grabs a chair and is outraged when Aubrey takes the chair away from him. Don Callis also outraged. They keep doing this match. And Swan kept going for the Phoenix Splash, which... I saw mentioned online, so it would have been a poetic finish if someone had beaten Omega with Kota Ibushi's finish. It right. didn't happen that way. He kept going for this finish, not getting it. And finally, Omega hits a bunch of V-triggers, Kreutz Wrath, and J-Driller, which is the move of the show for near, for near Falls. And <laughs> there's a point where Swan is just, he was in fact collapsed. He was a child's pose, like he's doing yoga, which is what you do in yoga when you're, you're exhausted. You can't move. And so Kenny holds him through the ropes to taunt Eddie Edwards and William Mack. And there is yet another Phoenix Splash, a uh, missed Phoenix Splash, I should clarify. Omega hits the V-trigger, and finally at the end, he finally hit the one-winged angel. He gets the pin. He is the new Impact World Champion. He's the new TNA World Champion. He's the AEW World Champion. He's the AAA Mega Champion. And the happiest man in the world was Don Callis, mm -hmm. who I believe hit the ring and began to skip. Yeah. Like a schoolgirl. <laughs> Hey, listen, I do have to give uh, Swan some credit. Even though he could not move, and when it was time for him to go to the top rope, it took him forever to actually get up there on the ropes, he still did manage to pull off his Phoenix Splashes every time. So That's I important. will give him that. That is very important. He built up a head of steam for a long time, but then, bam, he managed to hit it. The other hero of this show, which is despicable to have to say because he is a disgusting human being, it is Don Callis. This fucking guy is the greatest. That promo that he cut before the D Deanna Perrazzo match. I mean, if I hadn't bought the pay-per-view, if I heard him cut that promo, I would have bought the pay-per-view immediately. <laughs> like, he sold this like it was the biggest match we were ever going to see in our lifetimes. Like, this is history. If you don't see this match, you're going to have to tell your children, I wasn't there when Kenny Omega faced Rich Swan for both of these titles. It was a fucking incredible promo. And then his ring introduction that he did... For Kenny Omega was just the greatest. Gotch, Hackenschmidt. He's rattling off all these great Nick champions. Nick Bachwigel, Vern Gagne, Greg Gagne. Greg Gagne. I doubt he said Greg Gagne. And then he goes, they're all insects compared to the greatest wrestler of the last 10,000 years. Kenny, yes. by God, Omega. 
was like, this guy's the greatest. He will win uh, best non-wrestler. I think he may get the first 10 spots this year. I think it's possible. <laughs> he was fucking unbelievable on this show here. And now he's the uh, the champion. And uh, we'll see what happens because they did not promote this match at all on AEW. No. Not they, one time. They, they, wow. uh, in the trailer incident, there was one mention of Omega challenging for the Impact title, but no mention of when the show was. If something was on there, was this weekend. Just that it was going to happen. Yes, so they didn't promote it at all. And apparently, the the uh, when when Tony Khan buys commercial time on Impact and does those gimmicks, it's a gimmick. But if you watch the commercials for AEW and you saw the commercial for this pay-per-view, those were legitimately purchased by Impact Wrestling. They actually bought time for... This was not a gimmick. It was like, we got to advertise this show. They bought time. So, Tony Khan was there tonight. Kenny Omega won the championship. So, I guess the big question I want to know, besides obviously where they're going, but are they going to mention this at all on AEW on Wednesday? Or is he just going to come out with his one belt like nothing happened? Lance is doing his online coaching service <laughs> as he reviews and critiques the Battle of the Empire. This match is reminiscent of Flair Steamboat. Unfortunately, it's Vic Steamboat and David yes. Flair. Oh, terrible. And then again, this is what threw me because... That is not a particularly babyface thing to do. I wouldn't say we were both heels, but I, I could argue we were both unlikable. <laughs> <laughs> and to this day. Cardio and lack of interest is a big part. I think Orange Cassidy stole his gimmick from Vinny. Look at the cover of this DVD. It's one of my favorite photos of myself ever taken. And it is absolutely Orange Cassidy. You do look home. exactly like Orange Cassidy, just much yes. larger. Yes, and worse. Watch Vinny's head <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> bounce off the mat when he misses this elbow. Face the wrong way. Oh, God. Putting your own how, move on How disgraceful you. to put the, the man behind figure four in a figure four. This was really well done here at the end, though. You hit this so dead perfect in the middle. Not that chop, though. No. No! You need the flailing because there needs to be energy to the spot because it's supposed to be fun. The crowd wants to be excited, so someone has to display energy, and it's not going to be the man in the ring. <laughs> oh, so no, you. don't do that. What are you doing? <laughs> Mini you fool! Frozen. I got a little else to say. It's not very good. I miss chopping people. Wasn't the best match of all time. You know what I'm saying? I don't think you got five stars. Could probably take some lessons from Miz on how to work. Oh, get out of here. If you're out there listening and you would like Lance to uh, review one of your matches, much like he did to ours here, how do they do this, Lance? They can email me at swavirtualtraining at gmail.com. As I mentioned, the price is uh, 125 US for a single session. Uh, 300 for three. So again, SWA virtual training at gmail.com. If you enjoy these videos for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full length editions of the Brian and Vinny show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.